Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, first I, I want to, to, to thank you for hosting this very important event organized by the IIEA and the Commission. Uh, I think it's the second time that that kind of seminar um, intervenes on the uh, CSRs and uh, I don't know if it's an important event, but it's certainly a very good moment to exchange and to pursue the constructive dialogue that the Commission wishes to have with the uh, Member States. Um, as uh, it was explained a few minutes ago, uh, the Commissioners, especially uh, Commissioner Dombrovsky, Vice President Dombrovsky and myself, uh, we are uh, visiting the Member States in order to uh, uh, talk about this uh, very important event and unknown some times, which is the uh, European semester, and we uh, share the countries. I was invited here in Ireland. I'm uh, very pleased to, to, to come back to this country I know well. I've uh, been for a long time European Affairs Minister, Finance Minister. Uh, it was always a pleasure for me to come and visit this country, and especially in the circumstances that you today uh, find, because uh, it's, it's true that it's more difficult elsewhere. Uh, I'm not talking about any uh, specific country, but you might guess uh, maybe what I'm uh, talking about. Um, it's a pleasure to, to be in Dublin today. Uh, to present the first set of uh, CSRs uh, to be adopted, uh, the Commission led by, by uh, President uh, Jean-Claude Juncker. Um, the, the, the pleasure is made all the greater uh, as a result of the atmosphere. Uh, I would call that an atmosphere of hope and a renewal uh, that one senses here in Ireland uh, after years of uh, difficult but uh, necessary reforms. Um, a, a clear sign that uh, things have turned for the better is that Ireland was the uh, fastest growing economy in the EU in 2014 um, and is, uh, if I look at our own forecast, on track to remain in that position as well in 2015 and 2016. Uh, real GDP is expected to surpass a pre-crisis uh, level this year and this rebound is I must say, truly remarkable and is tangible proof that adjustment and reforms uh, do pay off when they are uh, carefully designed uh, and when there is a strong sense of national ownership. And this is the case here in this country. Uh, a common uh, understanding that adjustment and reforms may be uh, painful in the short term, but necessary and beneficial in the medium term uh, is, by experience, the, the most important element that uh, determines success. Uh, still, not everyone is yet feeling the benefits of the ongoing recovery uh, to a sufficient extent, uh, in, in particular those who are and were uh, most affected by the crisis. Although the unemployment rate dropped from more than 15% in 2012 to about 10% uh, currently, too many people I know uh, remain unemployed or, or live in precarious uh, conditions or bear the burdens of public uh, or private high debts. The, the, the positive developments of, of late should therefore not lead to a sense of complacency. Uh, major battles have been won and the Irish people must be and can be pride of, proud of that. Uh, but it would be a, a premature to say mission accompli, mission accomplished. In spite of the um, undeniable and remarkable progress made so far, important challenges uh, remain concerning public finances, uh, the financial sector, and uh, structural reforms. Uh, some people may uh, think that those challenges are, are merely uh, legacy uh, issues, uh, shadows from the past. However, uh, I believe it would be uh, wrong and risky to ignore the legacies of the crisis, notably the high private and public debt. Uh, these legacies make Ireland still vulnerable to external shocks. And as a, a small and extremely open economy, Ireland is more exposed uh, to external developments, both positive and negative. Uh, the uh, ongoing brisk economic recovery uh, provides an ideal opportunity to complete the adjustment process. My view is that when the winds, tailwinds are more favorable, it's the moment to, to, to go on with reform, not to stop or to backtrack. And this is clearly the view of the Commission. 
It is in this context that the Commission has put forward its CSRs to Ireland for 2015 and 16. Uh, such recommendations have been addressed to EU member states as a part of the European semester of economic policy coordination since 2011, as Dara Murphy explained, uh, in an effort to promote growth and job creation. The first full set of CSRs was addressed to Ireland only last year after uh, it had successfully exited uh, from the program, and, and still two countries today do not benefit from that. It's Greece and Cyprus, which are still in the framework of programs. Uh, seven recommendations were made last year, uh, covering uh, areas such as fiscal policy, uh, financial sector reforms, the labor market, healthcare, and legal services. Uh, the recommendations were very much reflected continuity after program uh, completion. Uh, while uh, the, the program was completed uh, with flying colors, it, it was clear that the adjustment process had to continue in view of the sheer size of the economic imbalances accumulated in the pre-crisis years. This year, uh, the Juncker Commission uh, wanted to change uh, the spirit uh, of the CSRs. And we uh, were determined to streamline the European semester process and the CSRs. Uh, the purpose was to focus minds and energies on the EU's three key economic policy priorities, namely a coordinated boost to investment. We all need investment. Europe suffers from an investment gap. Second, a renewed commitment to structural reform. And finally, pursuing fiscal responsibility. And we tried, and I hope it's a success, to have uh, CSRs which are lesser in number and more strategic uh, in their formulation. Uh, this streamlined and focused approach means that uh, the Commission has reduced the number of recommendations from all member states. We have also made the recommendations themselves shorter and more uh, pointed while leaving it to member states to determine concrete implementing plans. And here I want to say that this Commission doesn't consider itself as a, a, a teacher and does not consider the member states as pupils. I'm not here to lecture. Uh, recommendation means suggestion, means analysis. And then uh, it's up to the national government to uh, take the lessons out of the recommendations, to, to, to pick what they want to apply. And I think that's the best way to improve national ownership of those recommendations and to implement them. In the case of Ireland, this new approach means that the Commission has put forward four uh, country-specific recommendations for adoption by the Council three fewer than last year. And if you want an element of comparison, there are three recommendations for Germany, where I was last week. Uh, there are six for France, uh, where I was also last week, six for Italy, six for Croatia, etc., etc. And so we try to reduce and uh, focus. The four areas uh, for which recommendations are issued are, as uh, was said before, uh, fiscal uh, policy and taxation, healthcare reforms, uh, work intensity of households and child poverty risks, and finally banking sector reforms, uh, in, in particular related to, to non-performing loans. The, the first question you might uh, legitimately uh, ask is how the Commission selected these four areas and why issues that were covered last year are no longer subject to recommendations. Uh, why so? Uh, I, I think that this, this report took a, a broad view of the challenges faced by Ireland, not only from a macroeconomic perspective, but also in terms of structural and social issues. It concluded that Ireland had made progress in addressing uh, past imbalances and preparing uh, the ground for a sustainable recovery. But uh, the report I'm talking about, uh, which was published on February 26, the uh, country report, uh, also highlighted remaining weaknesses. And it's on those weaknesses that I want to, to insist. Uh, it's not contradictory with my initial uh, purpose, but it's, uh, I think, complementary. Uh, let me then first explain what the 2015 recommendations are before turning to uh, areas that have been streamlined. 
uh, first on fiscal policy and taxation. This recommendation focuses on three components uh, with a common goal, ensuring that fiscal policy uh, is sustainable uh, and geared towards promoting balanced growth and job creation. And the fourth component calls on Ireland to continue adhering strictly to EU fiscal rules in 2016, uh, in particular as it prepares to exit the corrective arm of the Stability and Growth Pact and enter into its preventive arm, which will be a considerable achievement and which will authorize uh, your country, Ireland, to benefit from the flexibilities that we mentioned in our communication of the 13th of January uh, by this new uh, commission. Converging to the objective of a balanced government budget by 2018, in structural terms, is the best way to secure the hard-fought gains achieved so far. As mentioned before, the high level of public debt, a legacy of the crisis, uh, means that Ireland uh, remains vulnerable to shocks. Uh, for this reason, uh, the recommendation calls on Ireland to avail of opportunities provided by the strong macroeconomic environment to, to accelerate a deficit and debt reduction. The second component calls on Ireland to further broaden its tax base and review tax expenditures, but without uh, calling for an increase in taxation. The third component also seeks to avoid a repetition of past mistakes resulting in pro-cyclical policies. Limiting uh, discretionary powers to, to change expenditures ceilings beyond specific and predefined contingency is needed to ensure the soundness of medium-term budget planning. We are not proposing that Ireland to uh, stick to expenditure plans no matter what. In line with the common practice prevailing in other EU uh, countries, we are recommending that expenditure plans be changed only in truly exceptional circumstances. Second uh, recommendation is on uh, health care reforms. Uh, the evidence from the, the past few years indicates that Ireland faces challenges in delivering health care costs effectively. Uh, budget overruns have occurred uh, systematically over the past few years, and uh, I know that uh, pressures uh, continue to build up. Public expenditure on healthcare is uh, comparatively high among EU countries, even though population health outcomes are by uh, and large no better. This is why uh, we believe that some structural reforms are needed there uh, without seeking to be exhaustive the recommendation, therefore, indicates uh, areas uh, where uh, cost effectiveness can be improved, and this includes mostly, as you know, public spending on patented medicines whose prices are well above the EU average. Third, a uh, uh, recommendation on the work intensity of households and child poverty risks. Uh, regardless of the indicators used, uh, Ireland is among the countries in the EU with the highest proportion. Uh, of people living in low work intensity households. Uh, this is only in part a legacy of the crisis, and uh, you know better than I do that it generates grave social challenges and it raises the risks of child poverty. Uh, low work intensity is also particularly severe among single adult households with children. Given the importance of the issue, the recommendation uh, calls on Ireland to act on, on, on two key strands of reforms. The first is to ensure that work always pays and that remaining disincentives to take up a job are eliminated by the tapered withdrawal of benefits and supplementary payments uh, upon return to employment. The second is to improve access to affordable uh, childcare, an indicator on which Ireland lags far behind most uh, OECD countries. Our fourth and last recommendation uh, is on banking sector reforms. Uh, Ireland uh, has come a long way uh, in restructuring, downsizing, and recapitalizing its domestic banks already. And this is also a very strong achievement. It is not by chance that the government is now uh, setting its sights on selling its remaining stakes in the banks. Uh, the disposals, when they take place, uh, will enable Ireland to significantly reduce its public debt. 
uh, they will also sharply reduce uh, the final cost of the support measures that were necessary to address the banking sector crisis. In spite of the impressive uh, progress achieved so far, uh, legacy challenges remain important. Um, the uh, government knows that. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about non-performing loans. Uh, they re still represent about 23% of the total. Uh, this is one of the highest rates in the EU. It is also an impediment to the capacity of banks to support the economic recovery. As a result, uh, the Commission continues to stress that further progress is needed in reducing non-performing loans. This is the case both in terms of uh, mortgages in areas and in terms of the non-performing loans of SMEs. Uh, Finally, let me uh, also say a few words on the areas that were subject uh, to uh, country-specific recommendations in 2014, but not this year. Uh, does it mean that the Commission is fully, I would say, satisfied uh, with the progress made in implementing these recommendations over the past year? Does it mean that the Commission no longer sees these issues as relevant for Ireland? Uh, the answer is, of course, that uh, they are still relevant, very much so, uh, but that progress uh, has been made sufficiently that there is no uh, specific recommendation for this year. Uh, in the area of uh, labor market reforms, there is no denying that efforts under Pathways to Work uh, and the Action Plan for Jobs have paid off, and uh, the Commission recognizes that. Uh, the unemployment rate, as I said, has fallen uh, from its peak about, of about 15% in late 2012 to, to 10% today on the back of rising uh, private sector employment. This is a, a major achievement, one more. But of course, there, there is much more to do uh, on uh, this front, especially in, in the view of the government's goal of increasing total employment to 2.1 million by 2018. I, I, I must say, to be very frank, that of course, uh, labor market reforms are uh, uh, a key benchmark for all countries in the EU and that almost all of them uh, benefit from CSRs on, on that field. A number of important initiatives are continuing, not least of which is the forthcoming uh, contracting out of uh, employment support services to private providers under the Job Path Initiative. Uh, continued progress is also uh, critical in making sure that further uh, education and training uh, programs are fit for purpose and respond to the needs of uh, an evolving economy. Uh, we recognize uh, this uh, and will continue to monitor progress in the context of the European semester. Similarly, uh, while the authorities have put in place major initiatives uh, recently to improve SME uh, access to finance, a credit to SMEs, uh, as you know, remain uh, subdued. This is no doubt in part due to the still muted demand for credit, but in the coming months and years, uh, it will be necessary to assess whether the new instruments effectively uh, address the financing uh, challenges that SMEs are uh, confronted with. Uh, as part of the program of financial assistance, Ireland committed to, to reforming the regulatory uh, framework for legal services in order to reduce costs. The Legal uh, Services Regulation Bill was indeed published in 2011, but the Commission uh, indicated on numerous occasions that pro progress towards uh, enactment was uh, frustratingly slow. Uh, although the bill is still to be enacted, uh, it cleared an important hurdle in April uh, by seeing sent to the Chenet uh, further amendments are anticipated, but we are uh, encouraged by the authorities' indications that enactment is now within reach, and we trust that there will be a rapid conclusion uh, to the legislative process. Uh, the, the Commission, uh, as I said, uh, views enactment of the bill as an important first step towards the reduction of high legal services costs, which make it more expensive to do business in Ireland uh, are a burden uh, on all citizens. The, the Commission will therefore uh, continue to closely monitor uh, progress in the context of the European semester, uh, as well as uh, under post-programme surveillance, given that the reform of legal services 
has been part of the uh, program commitments. To conclude, and uh, to uh, come to our exchange of views, um, let me briefly uh, indicate what the next steps are. Uh, the recommendations, uh, as Dara said, will be discussed along member states in, in the next few weeks before their adoption by the Council before the summer. It's a process there. Uh, Ireland, as in the past demonstrated, its determination to, to advance important reforms, uh, including in the context of uh, the financial assistance program. It has also shown its determination to, uh, in coordinating economic policies at the EU level, uh, including in the context of the Stability and Growth Pact and the European semester. Uh, this bodes well uh, for the implementation of 2015 recommendation and we'll continue to have a very uh, positive dialogue with the government. Uh, today we had the occasion to meet and we'll also meet with the Vice Prime Minister in a few minutes and of course with my friend uh, Michael Noonan this afternoon uh, after uh, being uh, heard by the Finance Committee of the Parliament. As I indicated already, uh, the Commission will monitor process uh, progress of, uh, on an ongoing basis as part of the U European semester cycle. Uh, in February 2015, the uh, Commission also concluded that Ireland continued to experience uh, macroeconomic imbalances that require a specific monitoring and decisive uh, policy action. As a result, uh, progress in implementing the recommendations on fiscal policy and taxation and banking sector reforms will also uh, be monitored as part of a semi-annual post-program surveillance missions. Um, I've focused, uh, as I was asked to do, on my recommendations, my remarks on our recommendations for Ireland. Uh, and our recommendations, by definition, uh, insist on, on what remains to be done to boost jobs and growth uh, and ensure financial stability. But again, I want to, to, to repeat the spirit. The spirit is not that the Commission is lecturing. The spirit is not that the Commission is uh, taking the arm uh, of government in order uh, to uh, uh, be uh, rolling over national sovereignty. Uh, it's up to the government, it's up to the people to decide uh, how they will uh, put this uh, recommendation into action. It's not up to us. And we want to have a positive dialogue with uh, the governments and with the uh, member states. But of course, we make suggestions uh, due to our analysis, and then we uh, pursue. This is the spirit of the European semester as uh, we clearly see it. And I must insist on the fact that talking about recommendations, so insisting on what remains to be done, uh, should not dilute my first message. Uh, and I will repeat it. My first message here today is that uh, Ireland's recovery is a truly remarkable achievement. Uh, and it is an achievement uh, of which this country, uh, the peoples, the people in this country, can feel proud. It's just a beginning. Uh, there are tremendous assets for the future. The Commission's role is to support Ireland. It's in its effort to uh, ensure that this recovery is a, as broad-based and durable as possible. And this is why sometimes we gave some advice on prudence. We spoke about prudence. It's always good to be prudent if we want to uh, take uh, the lessons from the past and avoid that uh, some bad experience uh, starts again. Uh, we want that the benefits of the recovery are felt by all Irish citizens. And this is the spirit in which we will continue to uh, deal with these recommendations, to uh, talk with the government, and to try to improve our own policies. And this is maybe one subject we are going to talk about uh, if we go over the uh, even subject of our CSRs. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.